Good evening and thanks for joining John News. In the headlines tonight, the mortal remains of late President Mills to be laid to rest here in Accra, August 10. Meanwhile, one week preparation underway and brisk lobbying for VIP position. We'll give you some names in the rumor mail. From the courts, EC stopped from conducting by elections in Boku. Also, the Boku Central MP has been convicted and sentenced to two years in jail. And Makola close traders cashing in on late president's death. That's for business and in entertainment, some soulful and hippie tunes to mourn our presidential loss. Also in sports, Olympics opening underway in London, these and more. So let's go straight to the details of our stories for tonight. The state funeral for the late beloved president H. E. John Evans Atta Mills will take place in Accra from Wednesday, August 8th to Friday, August 10th, 2012. A press release from the office of the president today said the funeral service and burial will be on Friday, August 10th and promised to announce further details later. Meanwhile, it is announced for the information of the general public and all consent that the period of national mourning and lowering of Ghana flags has been extended until after the state funeral. All public buildings are expected to be draped in red and black colors, as well as the national flag to symbolize the state of national mourning. Who becomes Ghana's next president? Perhaps this is one question that has generated a lot of discussion in the country's media. A few names of political and NDC heavyweights have made it to this special list of potentials. But the big question is, will President Mahama consider the options as been discussed in the media or surprise everyone? Curtis Howard has been teasing this issue inside out and has filed his report. Article 59, Clause 1 of the 1992 Constitution states, There shall be a Vice President of Ghana who shall perform such functions as may be assigned him by the Constitution or by the President. Clause 10 of the same article also states, The Vice President shall, upon assuming office as President, nominate a person to the office of Vice President subject to approval by Parliament. These constitutional provisions, however, did not indicate a time frame when the President shall nominate a person to the high office as vice president. It is now three clear days after the demise of former president John Evans Atta Mills and the swearing-in of John Dramani Mahama as president. Already, some parliamentarians and civil society groups are agitating as to who would or should become the next vice president of the Republic of Ghana. Five names have made their way in the media circles. These include Hannah Tete, Kwesi Bochi, Kwesi Ahoy, and Victor Smith. As to what informed the choice of these individuals, none can tell. But it is no hidden fact that the names that have popped up are persons of high repute who can get the nod. General Secretary of the NDC, John Sassidu Nketia, said the decision to choose a vice president to assist President Mahama in his duties solely lied on the shoulders of the president. Has no mandate in filling the position of a vacant vice president. It is for the country to do that. And the Constitution of the Republic of Ghana states in respect of a vacancy created at uh, the vice presidency that the president shall nominate a vice president for the approval of parliament. So we do not have uh, that mandate. The mandate we have is to select a running mate for our flag bearer. And there are two different things. So, uh, and since we, are, we don't have a flag bearer yet, it was considered premature to debate who the running mate will be. For civil society group like Wildhaf, the time is now for a woman to occupy the high position as vice president of Ghana. The late president Mills had made um, significant appointment of women into very significant positions. We have a Speaker of Parliament, the former Attorney General, we have a boss of the NCCE, Shiraj, Statistical Service, and so we believe that it will just be continuing that legacy. And then finally, we think it would also 
show that indeed women matter. We have proposed a number of names that belong to the NDC, but we have also stated categorically in the letter directed to the National Executive Committee that we believe that that list is not exhausted. These include the Honorable Hannah Tete, Minister of Trade, Juliana Azuma Mensa, Minister of MOAC, um, Honorable Sherry Aite, former Minister of Health under the former President Rollins regime, Dr. Mrs. Brookman Emisa, and a few others. Will Dove's Mercy Ajabin, however, advised the President to be guided by integrity, truth, and honesty when choosing a vice presidential candidate. Deputy Minister of Agriculture in charge of fisheries, Ni Amasa Namwali, did not hide his desire to see his boss, a Minister of Agriculture, Kwisi Ahoy, occupying the position. He will pick somebody who can, who can complement his work. He has been a vice president before, so he knows the person that you pick must do better than him as a, when he was a vice president. So he knows the, the work that is there, so he, know, he will choose the best person that will occupy that seat. Well, I will su suggest uh, uh, Honorable Kesi Ahoy, my boss. Deputy Majority Leader Rashid Pelbu will not say who his preference is for, but indicated that whoever President Mahama chose to assist him, must display leadership skills. I want to see a person who champions the affairs of the nation just as the president did. A person who reflects his thinking, aspirations and wishes and who believes in the Better Ghana agenda. And I know President Mahama is going to choose that kind of a person who will also reflect his own thinking and aspirations. So who would it be who assumed the enviable position as vice president of the Republic of Ghana? But one thing is for sure, that no matter how long this process will take, Ghana would definitely have a vice president before parliament, which has to approve this nomination rises, and for the 2012 campaign season to take off in full flight. It is not out of place to say that Dr. Mrs. Nado Mills is the most affected with the departure of President Mills. From now to his burial and or even further, she continues to get deserving consolation from Ghanaians and beyond. The residence of the former first family was filled with sympathizers as some of his neighbors looked on. As difficult as it is for the former first lady, she is said to be strong and in good shape. She is also said to have wished to avoid media cameras. Today at her house was the 60-year-old president of Benin, President Yayi Boni. He and his entourage were ushered in by the foreign affairs minister, Inusa Fuseini, and received by a Ghanaian delegation led by Enokte Mensa. As usual, the cameras could only capture happenings in the house from afar. They could not speak to the media there either. As he signed the book of condolence, our cameras caught a glimpse of her. But in respect to her wish of not appearing on TV, we avoided using it. But surely, she looked well encouraged. Today, members of parliament on both minority and majority side came to sympathize with her. Members of the clergy, led by Archbishop Palmer Bako, some chiefs and their entourage, Mr. Gusitano, Greater Accra Regional Minister Ania Futeagbo, Reverend Istrud Anaba, the NDC Zongo Caucus, and many others were also at the residence. We've seen that everybody's sad, and um, we are all coming together. And um, that is because somebody, we've lost a very important and a dear person to our nation. So is it possible for us to even come together when there's no death? Um, let's come together, respect one another, and things like that. And um, just discover that all of us, our lives are very important. Number one, for the family, that there is enough grace in God for situations like this. Saying, I have experienced it before, and I know how God can comfort and strengthen a family and let vision continue in spite of things like this. And for the rest of Ghanaians or, and the world, I will only say that during things like this, what people say and the way they use their tongues, sometimes is what will make it difficult for you to recover. So if people can guard their statements, control their emotions and sentiments, and not do negative things to inflame the people's wounds, especially the family, I believe that that will be a great blessing and gift to the people to help them to recover. I know the whole country irrespective of whatever you come from, months with the president. Uh, we thank God for Madame's life. And we hope, af after seeing her today, I know God will her to withstand the shocks. I came with my members 
of the Council of uh, Elders of PNC. I wish uh, to sympathize with all Ghanaians for the loss of our wonderful leader. We pray but that the Almighty God will give him a sleeping place. The regional coordinator of the Zongu Caucus, Krit Accra. We are here to mourn with our, our lustrous son of the land, who is our former president, President John Atafifi Mills. We have to see what has happened to our lustrous son. We need a unified body in Ghana. We have to unite. We have to learn from him. When we learn from him, Ghana will be a peaceful country, as we are at now. As indicated by Reverend Istud Anaba, who has felt a similar pain, the words and attitudes of Ghanaians are crucial in managing the emotions, especially of those who are most affected, like Mrs. Nadu Mills. From Joy News, Gifty Ando Apia. And as Ghana ends the fourth day of mourning, members of the ruling National Democratic Congress and former workers of the late president, John Evans Fifi Atamels, are prepping up for the one-week celebrations due this coming Tuesday, exactly a week after he passed. We are going to celebrate it one week from Tuesday. I came here just to have a meeting with the, the authorities and then plan the way we are going to do the one week. He sacrificed life that Ghanaians will be together and look forward for the prosperity of this country. Organizers hinted the celebrations will take place at the NDC headquarters and the late Professor Mills' office at Cuckoo Hill concurrently. At the party headquarters, various paraphernalia of the late president were on sale, including this cloth, which Joy News learned was the official cloth for the one-week celebrations. This one is for the one week, so everybody can wear it. We have three colors. We have uh, red, we have brown, and we have white. The name of the cloth is Seasa. Jewel Aka gave an a cappella of a tribute song he had just submitted to the executive of the NDC. Every misfortune is a blessing. Every misfortune is a blessing. On your mint team, we are. Metias, you are. Metias, that. As a party. Even though some Ghanaians are yet to come to terms with the sudden demise of the former president, the late John Evans Atamils, the swearing in of former Vice President John Jomani Mahama as president of the nation, clearly attests to the fact that the former president is no more, and he also neither occupies any position in the country or the NDC as a party. But with this reality comes many implications, including what happens to political advertising that had captured the former president as flag bearer in the December polls. Will his images still hold any relevance, especially to the candidates of the party, towards their campaigns? Tuesday, 24 July 2012, will forever remain in the history books of Ghana as her darkest day when death laid its icy hands on her president, John Evans Atamels. Western region, Ghana's first oil region, historically commissioned by the late president, is still in mourning. Red bands tied on doors of offices, as well as around the neck of residents spotted in the metropolis, with brisk business activities yet to pick up. Hitherto, parliamentary candidates of the NDC in the region had started brisk campaigning for the 2012 polls mounting billboards and posting posters at vantage points, some with images of the former president. Late Professor Mills, as candidate Mills for the December polls, had also received massive outdoor campaigns in the region. But what is demise? The question will be what happens to the vehicles and billboards as well as posters and banners that have been embossed with the images of the former president. Would the parliamentary candidates of the NDC, who had strategically positioned their images beside the former president, replace it or maintain it? As at now, Ankara has been already been portrayed, portrayed throughout the whole Ghana. But we are, now we are electing a new a flag bearer. 
Now, it's a very serious thing. You have to go to interview some of the uh, illiterate. Now that we have to uh, introduce to them our new fly bearer. So if we add the two at the same time, there will be a conflict of a uh, distance. Oh, the truth is, say, Sarah. Oh, Removing them anytime soon or later will still bring an added cost to NDC candidates' election budget. But the immense grief and general mood seem to tolerate any inconvenience that will keep the late professor's memory alive. <laughs> Death smiles at us all. All a man can do is smile back. President John Evans at Tamils smiled back on July 24, 2012, sending shockwaves across the nation and the world at large. Marian Ture brings you reactions from social media across the world. The passing of Ghana's president, the late John Evans at Tamils, has seemingly taken the world by shock. It is not usual that a sitting president would die, but when it happens, the news certainly dominates international headlines. Mills' death was not any different. As the news broke, many international media houses were initially skeptical about the development, obviously coming against the backdrop that there had been previous rumors about his death. A press release which was sent to the Joy Newsroom email address from the castle was met with doubt. As we frantically called contacts at the castle and NDC Big Whips to verify, breaking such news, if it turns out to be false, will be suicidal both for the media house and the anchor who breaks it. Wikipedia was among the first sites to have made public the news about the unfortunate incident. They updated President Mills's page to John Evans Fifi at a Mills, 21st July 1944 to 24th July 2004, was the third president of the Fourth Republic of Ghana. He died of cardiac arrest on 24th July 2012 at the 37 Military Hospital in Accra. Shortly afterwards, the BBC also latched onto the information and they wrote, Ghana's president, Jonathan Mills, dies. BBC further went on to say, Ghana's president, John Atta Mills, who was suffering from throat cancer, has died in hospital in the capital, Accra. International news giant CNN also reported the news, which carried a photo taken of Mills addressing a UN session. The story carried a rather brief heading, President of Ghana dies, officials says. The president of the West African nation of Ghana, John Evans, at a Mills has died, government officials said Tuesday. The AFP website captured the news. Ghana's president, John Atta Mills, died suddenly Tuesday, hours after being taken ill and months before a vote in which he was to seek re-election in the country, seen as a bastion of democracy in West Africa. Seconds after posting the news and press release on the Joy News Facebook page, comments poured in thick and fast. Celestine Baku Amenyo wrote, Indeed, a mighty oak has fallen. This oak did not just fall down, but has fallen on many dreams and visions. Oh, my dearest president, you have fought a good fight, and this is how far the good Lord wanted you to end the race. We loved you, President Mills, but the Lord who gave you to us as leader loves you best, and that is why he has called you at this time. You were a leader with a great difference. May your gentle soul rest in perfect peace. And Daniel Sakiti Minta said, It is of great sorrow that we pray to God that the soul of our president, Ankalata, will be granted rest and also thank God for granting us the youth of Ghana to have the opportunity to have experienced such a noble, gentle, meek father and above all, a humble man the nation of Ghana has ever seen. We pray that our leaders will take after such a modest character so that we, the youth, will forever be embodied in the shadows of the true nature of the King of Peace, Ankalata. God.
You're welcome back. It's still Joy News at 8. Sitting closed early today in Parliament to enable parliamentarians from both minority and majority sides pay a visit to wife of late President Atta Mills, Dr. Ernestina Nadu Mills. They later convened to sign the book of condolence for the late professor at the State House. Former President of Ghana, Jerry John Rawlins, was not left out of signing his condolence for the late president. Day three after the death of President Evans Atta Mills and Ghana's parliamentarians are still in no mood for proceedings. Shortly after the arrival of Speaker of Parliament, Justice Bamford Addo, she announced a scheduled appointment to the premises of late President Evans Atta Mills. Business statement, I shall not take too many um, comments because we have a schedule for 11.30 where leadership will proceed to greet um, the wife of the deceased president at 11.30 and should leave this place by 11. And then um, we have decided that as many of you as possible should after closing go and sign the book of condolence in the um, state house uh, um, part, uh, audio, is it there? Yes, yes. I, I, I would proceed there and I wish as many of you to take the opportunity to go and sign the book of condolence. So we don't want to waste too much time because um, the schedule for going to greet the former first lady is fixed and it will not be changed. So please let's hear the chairman of the committee, business committee. Yes, chairman. Earlier this week, they decided no major business will be conducted so they can mourn Professor John Evans at a mills, whose sudden death left many mouths sour. Parliament was supposed to have gone on recess, but due to the recent unexpected turn of events, the Speaker of Parliament announced recess is postponed until August 16th. When a buzz was arranged for all parliamentarians who wanted to pay tribute to the wife of ex-president Mills, Almost all of them proceeded to the house with no one wanting to be left out. The numbers at his premise in Accra was a clear indication of support for his wife and family. Unfortunately, cameras were not allowed into the house due to security concerns. However, the members of parliament represented by their leaders went forward to give their condolences. Almost an hour after the visit, they later reconvened at the State House to sign the Book of Condolence. Former President Rollins arrived unexpectedly to bid his former comrade farewell with a white rose in hand. Though he was in his usual boisterous mood, he refused to grant any interviews to the media. According to him, what he had to say had already been captured in the Book of Condolence. Residents of the beneficiary communities under the newly proposed constituencies in the western region are upbeat about their future fortunes. Granted, everything goes according to plan. Our western regional correspondent has been around some of these uh, communities and came through with the following report. The western region is expected to receive four new constituencies, bringing the number of constituencies in the region to 26 instead of the previous 22. The new ones are Kwesimensim, Mpoho, Bia East, and Bodi. Kwesimensim, which was carved out of a fear Kwesimensim district, will have the Kwesimensim community as its capital, whilst the Mpoho township will also be the capital of the Mpoho constituency, which was also carved out of Mpoho Wasa East. Bia East is expected to have a double chrome as its capital, whilst Bodi, which was also carved out from the Jabuso district, will also have the Bodi township as its capital. Three out of the four proposed constituencies, namely Mpoho, Bia East and Bodi, are being considered for a constituency status based on the fact that they have been given a district status and also based on the population in the area as well as the land size. The recent population and housing census saw the then Mpoho Wasa East District recording a total population of 123,996 with Jaboso having 111,749 whilst Bia recorded a population of 116,332 
Kwesimisim was, however, considered based on their population, which is about 200,000. Joy News paid a visit to some communities in these proposed constituencies, including Mpoho and Kwesimisim, to sample views and expectations of the residents. Business over the Bobo MP, you must some ranting being a Jumaye, ranting P being a Jumaye. And see, when you see there's a constituency in the Bobo MP, in the Semina, all young Jim no Naya bread, the air for car, air for higher coat, Nasena, or by a Naswa hammer, in a bema, young or dinema, or man or son, or to buy a pensa. Many residents eagerly await to see the new constituencies come to life. Welcome to the business segment. In business tonight, though the death of President Mills may have brought so much sorrow to most Ghanaians, to some smart and shrewd traders here in Accra, it also represents an opportunity to improve sales. A traditional morning cloth, Sasa, has suddenly gained fame, becoming a cash cow. Francisca de Souza was in Makula today. Sasa, 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 this is the money-making item at the Mokola market, the Sasa cloth. While some cloth dealers make at least a thousand CDs a day, others are able to rake in two thousand CDs from the sale of this funeral cloth. According to the market women, this cloth, which has become scarce commodity on the market, Will be used for Professor Mills's one week celebration. On the first day, I sold goods worth thousand cities. People want a lot of paraphernalia to buy. If you have, uh, you, we can sell more than 10 base or 20 base today. Bele is about 20 million. You understand? In a day. So if Sasa is around today, we, have, we can make money, a lot of money today because of the death of uh, President Atamos. This is an old feudal cloth, and we asked why the decision to use it. Mama, eye, eye town. She was, angma, sa, sa. Ni, beli, um, fe, um, bo. It is because when he was alive, people said a lot of bad things about him. It's all over now. Everything is over. Those who did not hear of the money-making cloth complained of low patronage. Because we are mourning, sales has gone down. People are not buying. Some traders are not even coming to the market. The sasa cloth has become a cocaine. You can't get it to buy. Tuesday, 31st July marks one week of the death of Professor John Evans at Tamils. In another development, the president of the Ghana Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Seth Ejeba, has assured business and potential investors are in Ghana that their interest is safe and will be secured no matter the trying times the country is going through. He said even though President Mills has passed on, President John Evans, John Mahama, has the international exposure to attract business. Speaking to Joy News, Seth A.J. Barr acknowledged that business might take a nosedive from now till elections are over, since investors would like to wait and observe the market. If it were in the four, uh, Western world, stock markets and everything will go down. But we are trusting that the new person will be able to stand to the test of time. Normally, at the latter part of election year, you don't expect that much. Even foreign donors and investors might be thinking that any money that is put into the economy will go into elections. Uh, it's quite a challenging position for him. And I don't think it will be easy for him, but he has to stand the test of time. He said the speed with which the then Vice President John Germani Mahama was sworn in as president is a sign of commitment to ensure business growth. Definitely, when a leader dies, something happens. I think the writing was done within 24 hours. The vice president was sworn in as the president of Ghana. There is no vacuum. He will continue to do the good work that he, the previous or the former president was doing. And I think we are going to support him to make sure that business will move on 
to help the economy to develop. He expressed his condolence to the bereaved family, the business community, and Ghana at large. The slow pace of internet service in rural and indeed some urban centers across the country is flying in the face of government incentives to have businesses locate and thrive beyond urban Accra. Joy News has learned that quite a number of businesses in the Bonahafa region are finding it very difficult coping with poor ICT services and its impact on their competitiveness in the market. Here is a report by Nesta Kafui Ajoma. In a digital age, the value of internet connectivity to businesses cannot be overemphasized. Government tax holiday for businesses locating in rural Ghana also recognizes infrastructural support such as ICT in the hinterland for businesses to truly thrive. For basic communication, transactions and production management, business processes are becoming heavily dependent on the internet. But high-speed connectivity enjoyed in urban centers, especially the capital, Accra, is almost non-resistant in towns, districts and villages across the country. The story is no different in the Brongahafu region as it takes a painfully slow process doing business via the internet. Many get frustrated whether they are simply browsing the internet from an internet cafe or using a modem. Sending emails, a very basic service, is also very difficult because of the snail pace at which the net runs. Atta Seth operates a cafe in Sunyani, the regional capital. The net is good, and then it's fast too, but sometimes it's no good. We can lose the link more than one week. That one too, it affects our business. Sometimes too, it runs slow. So when it happens that we lose the link, those who want to send their information, or uh, news to other news agents, they can have access to the internet. Consumers complain there are no broadband services in Sunyani, let alone the surrounding towns. When contacted, the various regional heads of the telecommunications companies declined to comment on the issue. Many residents join news spoke to urge government to double its steps in bridging the digital divide between rural and urban Ghana. <laughs> NPP Member of Parliament for Boku Central, Adamu Dramani, has been convicted and sentenced to two years in jail. Found guilty of false declarations about his nationality, the MP was sentenced to two years. Imprisonment lawyers for Mr. Dramani pleaded for mitigation, but the court rejected the plea. Mr. Yoni Kulendi, lawyer for the MP, told the court Mr. Adamu Dramani was a victim of circumstances. Mr. Dramani, according to the lawyer, procured the services of a certain Stanley Opoku, who claimed to be a lawyer, to help him renounce his citizenship and was led to believe the renunciation had been done. A cattle farmer sued the MP, accusing him of violating the electoral laws of Ghana by contesting the Boku Central constituency parliamentary seat while still a British citizen. The state took interest in the case and filed nine counts relating to his nationality perjury, forgery of passport, election fraud, and deceiving public officers to be elected as an MP against Mr. Dramani. He was, however, exonerated on six of those charges on July 8, 2010, leaving with three charges of false declaration of office, perjury, and deceiving a public officer. 
He was sentenced to two years for each of the charges, but the sentencing uh, will run concurrently. And we will be shortly be joined with the entertainment segment. Meanwhile, minority leader in parliament, Osechi Mensabonsu, and other party members have reacted to the conviction and sentencing of the Boko MP, noting his seat is still intact until the appeal process in court has been duly served. The, they intimated that MPP will pursue the case to the letter to establish the innocence of the Boko MP and tax residents of Boko to remain calm whilst the matter is resolved in the courts. Before yesterday and yesterday, I was with him here in my office and we're going through the motions. I wanted some hard evidence about uh, his own position. I wanted to be convinced and persuaded that indeed we must um, tie our mask to his. Um, he succeeded in convincing me that indeed uh, we should be home and dry. So against the backdrop, I was uh, surprised to have heard of his conviction this evening. Um, I quickly got in touch with him and his solicitors, and I'm told that he's instructed his solicitors, his lawyers, to file an appeal in respect of his conviction. And second, to also pursue a bail for him. And thirdly, um, that the, um, the appeal court uh, stays execution, causes the stay of execution of the conviction. So these three things are going to be pursued immediately. The constitution is clear that uh, the determination of such matters should be at the level of the high court. But if one has, uh, if the case goes against one uh, member of parliament, the member of parliament can then appeal. The constitution is quite clear that not until the process of appeal has been exhausted, the seat of that person cannot be declared vacant. So, uh, even though he suffered this conviction, the rule is gone against him for the time being, uh, not until the process of appeal is exhausted, um, he remains a member of parliament. From the piece of evidence that I gathered, I think that he, he hasn't got the, the, the mens rea to commit what he's alleged to have committed. Uh, I find it very unfortunate. Um, I don't think he will lose anything by way of um, entitlement as a sitting member of parliament. I know his lawyers are capable and they will find the necessary papers to ensure that an appeal is prosecuted on his behalf. I feel very sorry for the people of Boku because um, for the next three, four months, next three to four months, the people of Boku will be denied a representation in Ghana's parliament. It's a pleasure to have you join us on A News. My name is Gladys Osei Oredu. A News is brought to you by Airtel. Feel free. Tribute songs continue to flood the airwaves as Ghana mourns her departed soul. Professor John Evans Atamels. KK Fosu has joined the list of musicians who have composed special tribute songs to the memory of the president Ghana lost. <laughs> The song talks about the painful departure of a president who did not just stand for peace but also ensured that Ghana enjoyed absolute peace. KK Fosu, who has been off the music scene for a while now, could not hold back his grief and expressed it in his tribute song. Ghana has lost an icon whose memory will live on forever. May he rest in peace. 
Many are still grieving over the death of President Atta Mills. One of such persons is up-and-coming musician Kiki Stone, who calls himself Ochrema. Ochrema has released a single in honor of the memory of Professor Mills, who passed on a few days ago. <laughs> A tumor says the death of Ghana's president comes to him as a shock, and he is still coming to terms with it. The up and coming a tremor says Professor Mills died a hero, deserves to be honored. For this reason, he has released a single track called. <laughs> Chima, who says he is a sympathizing voter, says the death makes him realize that no matter what people say about you, you only have to remain focused and one day you will receive your honor. Don't believe it, I can't believe it. But I know it's God because all of his life, you know, as a hard, very hard working man, you know, he just ought to be a president you know so the dream have come to pass so that is enough and um, he was very slow but moving yeah so uh, he did his best and you know Achima hopes his tribute song to the late president will catch on and people will sing to the memory of former president John Evans at a mills <laughs> Before we leave you on E! News tonight, contemporary high-life maestro and nephew of Ghana's former president, Professor John Atta Mills, has paid glowing tribute to his late uncle. Born Nat Brew Amanzuba says his late uncle stood for peace and so Ghanaians should let peace prevail in all endeavours to his memory. <laughs> Nadbru, also known as Amanzaba, was born in Cape Coast, the capital of the central region. Amanzaba says his father and former president Atta Mills are first cousins. He and my father are first cousins, so it means that their mothers are sisters. And um, I believe so much that we have, we have lost someone who not only serves as a nation's leader but I think an icon on the whole continent of Africa. He would attest to the fact that uh, even comments coming from leaders of the world really indicates the fact that they have a lot of respect for him. Amanzaba describes his late uncle Professor Mills as a disciplined man who fathered everyone irrespective of one's background and loved his country. Well, we all will have to understand one fact that we all need peace and the man was a symbol of peace. He actually exuded that and all of us really, really know the value of peace. So I think that I'll seize this opportunity to ask. Already we are seeing how united the whole nation is and I'm, 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 I'm so, so, so happy for us all because it means that Ghana is actually the beacon of hope. He says among the lot of things he will remember him for is the support for the creative art industry in Ghana. There goes another one for Ghana's fallen hero. Before we move on to sport, our headline story here, a human rights court has placed an injunction on the Electoral Commission from holding the Wollensi and Quabre West by elections. This follows a suit filed by four political parties to prevent the Electoral Commission from using the old biometric register in conducting the by-election instead of the new voters' register. Four political parties, NPP, CPP and the PNC jointly filed a suit against the Electoral Commission due to the absence of a functional voter register to conduct elections in Quabri West and Wellency. The by-elections comes in the cause of the death of the members of parliament, Alaji Sani Idi and Imanolo Wusu Ansa at Wellency and Quabri West, respectively. 
The parties argued on the basis that the Constitutional Instrument 72 had revoked the Constitutional Instrument 12, which the EC was seeking to use the old voter register for the by-election. The EC says it can't hold the by-election as the new voter register would not be ready by the proposed date for the two by election. We cannot use the biometric voters register. Our preparation of the register goes through some processes. If the register has not been exhibited, we cannot use it as um, an authentic register for an election. So these processes cannot be completed before 31st July, cannot be completed before 15th of August. And that is why the commission's uh, decision is that the two elections uh, should be called off. The court ruled in favor of the four political parties and some have expressed satisfaction with the court's ruling. We have indicated, uh, we're, we're happy that the judicial interpretation that we sought uh, has gone our way. Uh, it needed to be, to be clarified because we were in a gray area. Uh, lessons should be learned, as I've said, and uh, hopefully uh, next time round we will not leave such a gaping hole uh, in the heart of our, our democratic process. We we'll feel satisfied and that we think that it's a victory for democracy and that uh, democracy has come to stay and that uh, the culture of respecting the laws and always trying to test it has proven to be the right uh, channel for all Ghanaians to always resort to. We have entered into a different level of uh, voter register and we want to see that work. So if we ignore it, I believe that we are not doing just to the law and to the exercise. Following the court's ruling, the EC would not conduct the by-election in Wallensi and Kwabwe. Hello there, good evening. Thanks for staying tuned to Sports on Joy News on Multi TV. My name is Rashida Kadiri. For us here in Ghana, we are mourning the death of our late president, John Evans Atemills. But on the other side, uh, especially in London, the feeling of nostalgic moments has actually started as the London 2012 Olympic Games officially opened. And uh, Joy Sports' Tony Beverly is watching proceedings live and joins us on phone. Hello, Tony. Hi, Rashida. Tony, uh, bring us up to speed on what has happened so far. Rashida, as I told you earlier, on, the whole place is noisy, so I need to uh, give, but I'll, I'll take the opportunity to uh, get closer somewhere that the noise will not disturb uh, our viewers as well. And I think that uh, that's something that will go down with history. I've not seen some, something like this before. For the first time in the history of Olympics, uh, I think that it has been a great thing. And at the opening ceremony, the Queen was flown in through uh, by um, through by an, uh, a helicopter and then landed. And I think that uh, there has been something that we need to talk about. And uh, the whole stadium is full to capacity. The outside is full to capacity. And as I said, you have 11,000 athletes present today, this evening, who will be marching all over the Oval and I've sworn about uh, 200 countries being presented here this evening at the Olympic Square Stadium at Stratford. Okay, Tony, um, 11,000 athletes from over two, from about 204 Olympic committees all over the world. Um, we understand that Team Ghana will not be marching on in their usual take clause. What are they marching on as they take their turn uh, to be introduced to the rest of the world? Rashida, as you know, we lost our president on Tuesday, and in uh, part of morning, <coughs> the late president, John Stevens, at our uh, the GOC decided that uh, this evening, the entire country, the entire entourage of the team Ghana will be wearing an all black to tell the whole world that our president is no more, and in solidarity, don't forget our president was a strong sportsman, and in solidarity, more a great president, we need to wear the apparel black black for everybody to know that we are mourning. But with that, it doesn't mean that the morale of the sportsmen has down. Came last Thursday, the UK High Commissioner, Ghana's UK High Commissioner, um, uh, Professor Dan Subafo, uh, really um, uh, encouraged the, the sportsmen to go all out as uh, the game commences to come tomorrow to make sure the whole medals for the country to make sure our president's soul might rest in perfect peace. 
All right, Tony, thank you very much, and keep monitoring proceedings. We'll be getting out or we'll be reaching out to you in uh, subsequent bulletins for more updates from London. And uh, we find out what happened on this day in sports history. You're live on John News. This is the Continental News. The mastermind of a white supremacist plot to kill Nelson Mandela, South Africa's first black president, has been convicted of treason. A Pretoria court ruled that Mike Dutort was behind nine bombings in Johannesburg's Soweto Township in 2002. Mike Dutort is the first person to be convicted of treason in South Africa since white minority rule ended in 1994, the Pretoria High Court handed down its verdict against the tort, a former academic following a nine-year trial. Earlier, Judge Eben Dagold said the tort had altered a blueprint for revolution intended to evict black people from most of South Africa and to kill everyone who got in the way. Witnesses told the court that Burmag, a white extremist group, had carried out a spate of bombings in Soweto in 2002, killing one person. The group had also planned to stage a coup and assassinate Nelson Mandela, who spent 27 years in prison before being elected president in 1994 and acted as unifying force after decades of white minority rule. The Netherlands has suspended an aid budget to Rwanda over its alleged backing of rebels in the Democratic Republic of Congo. This comes days after the U.S. announced it was cutting military aid to the country. Rwanda has rejected reports made by U.N. experts that it is supporting the M23 movement rebels in eastern DR Congo. The rebels mutinied from the army in April and some 200,000 people have fled their homes as a result of fighting. The move to suspend the aid budget worth $6.15 million comes as a senior UN official told reporters that defecting Congolese rebels have confirmed that they were recruited in Rwanda. Eastern DR Congo has been plagued by fighting since 1994 when more than a million ethnic Hutus crossed the border into DR Congo following the Rwandan genocide in which some 800,000 people, mostly Tutsis, died. And that's all we have for you for now. That's for Joy News at 8. We'll return at 11. My name is Kifti Ando up here. And my name is Evans Mensah. Enjoy your weekend. But we'll have 11 for you.